Wow, that's crazy. Aloha and welcome back again. I'm the Clueless Traveler. This time we're gonna switch the hiking boots for tires and have a road trip to Hana. Good morning. Today we are going to Hana. So this entire episode is going to be about how to get to Hana. Hana is all the way on the eastern side of the island and you have two ways to get there. There is the northern route which is more the scenic route and the adventurous one because it's uh, kissing the, uh, yeah, the, the, the ridge line sort of the whole time so it's mostly a wiggly wiggly road that takes you a long time to get through. Then there's the southern route which is supposed to be a bit more straight lined and a little bit less wiggly and squirrely whirly. So I'm taking that one for now. Uh, see how long it takes. It's supposed to take around two hours. So let's see if that is correct or not. Uh, and how the road is to get there in the first place. So right now I'm traversing the upcountry around Kula towards the uh, southern point to then take the turn down south. So yeah, until now it's a little bit uh, downhill and uphill downhill. And later on we have a little bit of a long stretch. And then we have a good view I hope. So uh, yeah, first time for me to go this way. I took the, the different car also, the uh, Hyundai, the normal fuel car, not the electrical one. Uh, because yeah, it's five, 50 miles, so the electrical car it's going to be questionable if it's actually going to make that or not. There's no charging station over there. So yeah, for now we have a nice view. Uh, I don't know if you can see it from here, but yeah, maybe from here. The southern route is also known as the Pi'ilani Highway, named after the 16th century Maui king. And it is 61 kilometers long or 38 miles. Originally there was a connection from Kihei and Waimea, but now that has been closed and you have to go through Kaholui and then towards Kula and then you start the route. This route takes up to two hours compared to the two and a half for the northern route. So that's the same, uh, same lava field that all the way down the coast that, that, that you have this uh, King's Highway as they call it. Very cool, very cool. You can also see it from down here, from, well, from up here. Some sections are unpaved and therefore some people avoid this route because of rental car company policies. But it sounds more harrowing than it actually is because I did it with this car and if I can do it with this car, you can do it with any car. The more popular Hana Highway or Northern Route is 104 kilometers or 65 miles. And it has a whopping 620 curves. Who actually counted this? and also 59 bridges of which the majority is over a hundred years old. Construction on the modern road started around the 1870s and it took up to 90 years to finally pave the entire route. But this was not the first road. The first road was built in the 16th century under King Piilani and his son. It was just barren land before and now we are entering more the green side again and we are back in the Haleakala National Park because like as I said in that episode uh, it is connected to the crater this this part of the island the National Park at least so yeah it's ironic but it becomes greener here more green here and there and also the mountains up there So we are roughly an hour away from Hana, I hope, and uh, this road, I was hoping this road was going to be uh, easier than the other one, I don't know yet about the other one, but yeah, I've already read about it, that that other one is really, yeah, you, you can barely go fast, it's basically just uh, a lot of tight turns and stuff, so I guess this one is better because at least you can kind of keep going, you know, you can keep driving most of the time. Now that we are entering more the uh, the wild side of things. So, but yeah, it's still a pretty rough road to drive. So uh, be prepared for this. 
now we are in the uh, dirt road of it, which is not supposed to be such a big deal. Just gravel, basically. this guy doing? Oh my god, what the hell is wrong with him? I knew it, I knew it. But uh, sometimes you get these views. Why not trying to die? Jesus, man. Wow. What a road, what a road. Man. Imagine your brakes failing now. That's gonna be a problem. That's crazy. Oh. Man. Oh. That's great. I have nothing in this. There's no, no juice in this. Lost. Oh, okay. I have no water. Well, I have my own water to drink. But okay. Well. Figure that one out. We reached a place with a little bit of stretch where it's just a bit straight, straight, not those tight turns anymore for the moment. That was the hardest part, probably, hopefully. Uh, later up again, we have some more turns, but for now, we have a little bit of straight road. Still haven't solved the uh, dirty window situation. I mean, yeah, I, I don't have water, and I didn't know that this car apparently has no fluid in it. Um, so that's nice. Yeah, I will definitely get some fluid somewhere in Hana. Now we have reached a uh, normal road. With actual lines on them. Wow, that has been a wow. So we're like five minutes away from Hana, and then we finally arrived. Lived in Hana, and we are at the beachfront. So this is the uh, easternmost edge of the island. So uh, let's have a look at the ocean. The town of Hana has around 1500 inhabitants and its economy is mostly tourist based thanks to the highway and numerous beaches and historical sites. In fact, people have lived here for probably 1500 years. As previously mentioned, Hana was always isolated until the road was finally constructed. So getting in and out of Hana was very difficult, also considering that horses were not introduced until the Europeans arrived. But the Polynesian canoes saved the day. Right, so this is a little food truck in Hana. I'm going to go to the Black Beach, Black Sand Beach. So I looked up this uh, little place on well, Google Maps, right? For some uh, quick coffee. So I got a normal 
black espresso, here we have it. Just an espresso. Five dollar twenty. Five dollar twenty. What what's inside of this of this coffee? Gold or something? It's it's gold coated beans or five dollars. My god. You have to make a reservation also to enter this state park and one day in advance. Why? What's what's the deal? It doesn't even look that busy actually to be fair. So I could also do it now. But no, you have to do it one day in advance. Like that's I don't know. I don't know if it is normal for state parks to need to have reservations one day beforehand, but um, it's a beach. It's literally a beach park. Uh, Red Sand Beach. Here we have the Hana School. It's a very old uh, complex, as you can see. Pretty, uh, I mean, relatively old. Very nice. And here we have the sporting facilities. So here we have the, the ballpark. And uh, this is kind of where a lot of stuff is, apparently. A lot of sporting things and activities. It's not a big town, of course. It's relatively uh, a couple of streets and you're done. Well, let's get to this beach as, as, as everybody else is trying to get to. And just have a little bit of a break after that long drive. Um, you could be fooled by this closed gate, which is uh, sort of like a lodge or I think hotel or something. But you actually have to go here, right next to it. Follow this little trail. And then you should end up at the beach, I hope. So don't get fooled by that gate and think, oh, I cannot get there. But yeah, you can probably just by this little route over here. Well, let's have a look at what this red sand beach, if it's, if it's true, you know, if it's really red or not. Okay. Trail is dangerous, but I think every trail here is dangerous to one extent, to a certain extent, or not. Let's see. That's definitely not swimmable. Definitely not. But that's uh, amazing, you know, amazing. Oh. Wow. Now I understand what the warning was about the loose sand and the landslides. Because look, it's all loose. This is all loose, and this is the same as the entire wall here. It's just all loose pebbles. So one thing goes, the whole thing goes. Look, this is all gone, and it's now down here. So that one. That can technically also just come down and you're, well, you're pretty fucked. 
it's a uh, yeah watch where you're going I guess and uh, hope for the best man oh man wow that's amazing whoa I mean, yeah, I get the name, it's red here, it's red, it's kind of like Haleakala, it's kind of the same redness, it's probably the same volcano, volcanic stones and substance and everything. But that's amazing, right, like, it looks almost like a European forest a little bit. It's, uh, you know, kind of like pine trees and everything, very, very beautiful, it's amazing. And then the blue water, you have the light blue colors, you have the dark blue colors. And just the, the, the really the black colors. Wow. And just around this corner, we uh, we got the actual sand beach. So let's get down. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, definitely red, definitely red. that you know those paths like these are just normal things that everybody does but they are actually technically kind of dangerous I mean and also how the hell did you get those here I mean why even but that this is even it's crazy actually that those adventurous paths for us at least uh, are just normal things to do around here to get to a to, to to get somewhere, you know. But technically, you're just walking next to the cliff, and you can fall off. So yeah, I guess in the in the U.S. you can do those things, but you cannot have Kinder eggs. Interesting. Here we are back at the uh, first beach we were in the beginning. That's the one up there. And here we have a regular houses and neighborhood. So let's go to the uh, center and uh, see what that one looks like. So there's sort of like a, sh a shopping area or something. I think that's the only center that they have here. So let's have a quick look over there. I mean, I've been driving for so much that it's okay now to go for a walk, I think, right? Well, this person has uh, buoys for decoration. <laughs> And you can buy mango seeds and mango pickled. Pickled mango. I've seen other things. They wanted to, yeah, pickled mango and other stuff that they pickle, like fruits. I've never heard of that. It doesn't sound very tempting. 
but maybe it's very good, I don't know. Yeah, very nice house and garden here. Yeah, very nice. Another nice house. I mean, it is beautiful here for sure, definitely, I mean, like, I could not imagine living in such a place because it's far away from where everything else is, as usual in those places. Unless, there's actually an air, airfield here, an airstrip, and I don't know if they use that very often, but probably if you have a car you don't. But imagine if you need to get something from the main city, uh, Kao Louis, then you have to drive that road every time. So, and then if you do it in one day, it's gonna be a four hour trip basically just to get something. So, yeah, maybe there are boats, I don't sure, I'm not sure about that. Maybe there were or not anymore, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so that's what always, I always wonder kind of how those people then decide to live there or. They've always lived there. And also people that I saw along the road, they even live more remote because they don't really live in a town like this one. They just live somewhere next to the road in the middle of nowhere. And there's nothing nearby. You have to go left or right, here or to the main part. And there's nothing. You, you have to be really self-sufficient basically to survive. It's a... Uh, I mean, it's an interesting choice. Definitely people that want to do that. But I, I would wonder if those people don't feel lonely or something. So here we have a little shopping center with arts and stuff. So let's see what we can get over here. An art gallery, dry goods, and other things. Things here in artworks, but uh, yeah, not some, not very affordable for me. Uh, it's more than my flight ticket to get in here, but it's beautiful. Look, there and uh, other stuff. Here we have the bungalows and the suites and everything. Oh, but look at the beautiful birds. Oh. The yellow one. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah, so many beautiful things around here. Uh, so I'm a little bit time restrained in that sense. I have to be back at least, well, before darkness or at least not everything in darkness. Because driving that road in the dark is not the best option probably. And also because I need to go back home for the dog and the pets and stuff. So when you're pet sitting, you have responsibilities and you have to come back. So, can't stay here too long. Uh, all jackfruits. <laughs> Pretty big. You know, we never see those kind of things. You, you always see the end product in the supermarket, but we never see the tree. So, it's very interesting to me. <laughs> oh, he's not here. This, this one too. It's also a jackfruit. Wow. I didn't know that they could go so big. Well, we're basically for a full circle again. Just uh, again. Not the entire town, by the way, but uh, just this little mall and resort thing for some souvenirs. And the rest is just, to be fair, is the beach. And then there's a couple of uh, streets with houses and uh, the odd restaurant here and there. 
So yeah, the town itself, of course, is not that much. But I'm gonna see, of course you come here for the other things like uh, the national parks, if you don't have to reserve for that, like with the black beach, black sand beach. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna have a quick look at what my next step is going to be. I finally found my window liquid. Uh, it's clean now, more or less. Almost four liters went inside of this thing. I think it was roughly three liters that went inside of this. It was completely empty. And it's leaking because the back side of it, uh, the, the back window, doesn't work. The uh, liquid part, because that's now there. So somewhere internally there's some leakage or something, so I'm not going to use that one. That's a big problem, <laughs> but it's an old car. Back towards one of the uh, sightseeing places. It's a, uh, I think it's called like what well, some kind of pools or something. It's pools, natural pools, and then slowly making my way back again down the same road as I came from uh, because the sunset will be obviously on that side, and if I will take the other side, it will be darker, quicker. So it's smarter to have as much light as possible, so staying on the same road as I came. And it's, it's still probably slightly easier than the other one. So yeah, let's first have a look at this pool. It was not a clear entrance, you have to find a parking. There's no parking anyway, because well, this is for the entire length of the road here. Uh, I, just a neighbor told me about that car there. Hey, is that your car? I'm like, no. It's like, can you play? You're gonna go to the pool? Like, yeah, yeah, okay. Tell anybody there that if they have a Nissan, it's gonna be towed. So they have this problem here, obviously. I mean, quite understandably, it's pretty, pretty annoying if it happens all the time. So uh, I parked it in the side street over there. There's no sign there. So I'm gonna have a quick look. So I don't know where I enter or how. Uh, let's see, I guess like here. Looks like here, yeah. Alright, okay. Oh, uh, right, trails is th this is what? I don't think it's there, so I guess it's here. Yeah, this must be it. Okay, well, let's see what's at the end of this. Yep, that must be it. Ow. Wow, that's a big one. Huh. That's a very big pool.
and there we have the Venus pool. It's actually a very, very big pool. Uh, yeah, you can jump in it. And yeah, this one is what? It's way rougher here. Uh, very rough, very rough. Well, let's see what else, where else we can go. Beautiful, beautiful. Pool, people. Wow, it's pretty cool this. <laughs> if I have more time, I will take a swim. But no, I have to get back. But first, we're gonna do one of the trails that are here, which is the PPY Trail. It's uh, one of the good ones around here on the island, and it's on the south end of the island. So, I'm gonna do it on my way back as a stopover quickly. It's a half an hour more or less from Hana. So let's go there and see what kind of beautiful stuff we can find. connected with the Halakala trail so that could you still use that animal pass that uh, my friend Joshua gave me before <laughs> I forgot about that so that saved me 30 bucks again you know making friendships is good also made I also met this nice uh, couple that was on honeymoon just before in the Venus pool and uh, yeah had a nice conversation I told them about house sitting and they were like oh yeah we should definitely do this so uh, I always try to spread those ideas with other people other people should also enjoy these things. I mean, it's a great opportunity to see the world. Why well, decided not to do the PPY trail now? Because of the well, the sun is setting, and I don't want to drive back in complete darkness. So yeah, there's this other one, this little one uh, that is more like a coastal route with some archaeological sites and stuff. So I'm just going to do that one instead. Quick look around maybe I come back for the other one but I don't know because that means that I have to ride, drive that entire road basically again just for this trail um, and I, I think the main uh, beauty of that trail that people like was the bamboo forest which is like I think almost at the end of the trail but I think there are other bamboo forests also on this island so here we are at one of the archaeological sites Thank you. 
So they used a foundation of lava rocks, as you can see, and then they would make a wooden frame and with some kind of grass, they would make complete closed off house, sort of. Uh, and this is where they would start, you know, their fishing adventures and they also had farming. So they were farmers, they had uh, terraces, just like you think of in Asia, for example, where they, uh, yeah, cultivated, and they still cultivate around here with those terraces. Wow, the wind is picking up suddenly. Well, let's keep it going. That is a monk seal again. He's just chilling. <laughs> wow, this wind is heavy. Here we are at a city called uh, Mahele. I don't know if I say that right, but um, it's basically remnants of a estate. Just yeah, the foundations. You can see over here. That's the only thing that's left. But um, basically, it explains that the uh, Mahele was a privatization uh, effort from the King Kamehameha III who tried to sort of save or actually protect the Hawaiians against Western ideas, which was like that land could be private, which isn't always a concept in every culture and country. So he thought, well, if I just implement it, then my people can just be private owners of their own land and we don't have to be afraid of this new development and they can pr be protected and they keep their own land. But it didn't really end that way. Most people that didn't really understand this entire concept in general so in the end, land ended up in Western hands, mostly uh, business, private business owners. And then the very controversial overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy happened in, uh, was it uh, 1898? And then later, of oh, no, 1893, and then the annexation of Hawaii into the US, 1898, which is still very controversial. This is also still a remnant of that family. And this family, unfortunately, had the result of that their entire estate was destroyed in the end. They uh, leased the land to the sugar cane factories. And in the end, it just uh, destroyed most of the land, the sugar cane. They tried different things, pineapples and whatever. But yeah, by the overthrow of the uh, kingdom, Everything was basically up for grabs, uh, basically, so yeah. Again, it's still colonialism, technically. I mean, the US also did, and still has, sort of colonies, like some other countries have. But yeah, they def definitely dealt in colonial stuff. Kind of like the French, you know, with Algeria, that they made it part of France. Not as that's just a uh, colony, but an actual part of France. So, here we have a um, reproduction kind of thing. Reconstruction, I mean. So this is a reconstruction of uh, one of these houses. So this is how they make it. Cutting the posts, lashing the roads, uh, fashioning the roof, yeah. For families, storage, and a community building.
I don't see anything when the sun is in my face, like literally nothing, just a white flash. Not even without with sticking my head out of the window, you see nothing, absolutely nothing. It's beautiful though, but a bit deadly. As you can see, driving back home with sunset is very beautiful. But you will change your mind when the sun is gone because there are no lights on this road and there are wild deer and boars around. So the chances of hitting something are quite big. And missing a turn or missing a bridge, it can happen. So please be on your best and stay alert. Well, after a very long drive from Hana, I made it finally back home. Uh, when I came home, I was very tired actually, and I just went to bed very early. Because I also work 40 hours a week, and then doing little things next to that sometimes is just tiring and exhausting, obviously. Anyway, it was a beautiful, beautiful road. Um, if you like this kind of scenery and adventure, I definitely recommend to do it. The southern route is the less chosen route. Uh, the northern one is the, the more used one. So I would say, yeah, it's uh, maybe nice to just uh, switch things around and do the southern one. It's slightly easier, they say. Um, but yeah, I must of course say that if you have any kind of travel sickness, like I have, um, it's not gonna be fun. Just gonna be honest about that. It's not gonna be fun for anybody that has this. You have to really make sure everybody has pills. Uh, even if you don't suffer in general, it's probably likely that you could suffer now because it's ups and downs and turns and curves the whole two hours long. And remember that if somebody starts feeling queasy, it's over basically because this person has to wait for hours to feel normal again like I had when I was a kid and basically the entire trip is ruined because you also have, also have to go back again so think about that before you go um, everybody take their pills yeah and then it's up to you if you find it worth it, worth it or not I personally would never want to be a passenger on that kind of a road because I know I will never enjoy it like this only if I drive myself I can be okay with that but as a passenger, I would never want to do this kind of a road. It's a beautiful road, but yeah. For Hana itself, not that big. And my recommendation is really take a weekend to do this. You can do it in a day, but it means waking up very early. It is the best to get back home before sunset. So that's around six o'clock. So again, I, I recommend a weekend so you don't have to rush through things. But again, that's, uh, that's up to you. But I definitely enjoyed it. And now it's time to prepare for another adventure. And that was the end of this adventure. Please let me know if you are considering doing this or if you have done it and what do you think of it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.